Good morning, and welcome to Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. We are located at 920 Los Robles Boulevard here in Sacramento, California. Our zip code is 95838. Every Sunday at 9 a.m. is Sunday School, and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. is Bible Study. Both Sunday School and Bible Study are on Zoom, and the links will be in the description. Thank you so much for fellowshipping with us. We hope you come back and fellowship with us again. Thank you so much for your time, and have a blessed day. Good morning. It is again. We say thanks be to God for allowing us to come together once more and again on this occasion to share his word. We trust and hope you have had a wonderful week. Pray that God will continue to keep you. We thank God again for allowing us to come to give a word. We trust and hope today through the word you will be encouraged. We ask that you be prayerful, be mindful, be cautious during this season. We thank God that he have kept us by his grace Let's pray for those that have been victimized by the coronavirus. Pray for the families that lost their loved ones. We pray that God will continue to bless and to keep you. Sooner or later, this will pass. So today we would like to share from the book of St. John one of my favorite books, I like them all, but John really, really stands out. So, we like to pray and then we'll get into the message. All minds are clear. Father, it's again, we say thank you for allowing us to come back to the house of prayer to share your word. We ask that you give us an ear to hear, heart to receive, mind to understand. We thank you for your word today. We ask for the illumination of your word, the inspiration of your word, the anointing of your word. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. As we come today, we pray that your message will go forward, and that it will touch hearts, open minds, for we ask it all now. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning again. We come to share with you from and in the word of God. <clears throat> perhaps you have read and perhaps you remember this scripture above all. Sometimes we take certain scriptures lightly. Sometimes we just quote them over and over and over, never really thinking about what they mean, what they are saying, or the nuggets that's in them. So today we would like to talk from the book of St. John, chapter 3, verses 16. We'll read it, and then we'll talk from it. Is that all right? Reading from the King James Authorized Version, St. John, Gospel, chapter 3, verses 16. Notice what John said, what Jesus had said. He said, for God so loved the world, on the line the word world, that he gave, on the line gave, his only begotten son, on the line that. That whosoever, underline that, believe it in him should not perish, underline that. Watch this, but have everlasting life. Circle that, circle that. Again, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe it in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Want to talk from today? The greatest verse in the Bible. The greatest verse in the Bible. I'm sure that you've read it, perhaps memorized this one more so than any other scripture, even from 
your childhood, you remember this verse, John 3, 16. I believe that you will find more in this verse to the human race more so than any other verse in the Bible. The greatest verse in the Bible. No other chapter and verse offers as much as John 3, 16. We're going to go through it. And I found at least eight factors we like to share with you from this verse. Again, John 3, 16. John, the beloved apostle, disciple, writes and gives us the recording words of Jesus. This particular chapter in the Bible is where Jesus was met by Nicodemus. Nicodemus had heard a lot about Jesus, but he wanted to see him for himself. And notice he came by night. Did nobody point him out? Did nobody uh, lead him? He came on his own. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. He was a teacher. So he was pretty well versed on the scriptures. But he stole away one night to see who Jesus was. And as the conversation go and began, he said, you must be a man from God for no one else can do the things that you're doing except God be with him. Jesus met him where he was. He knew why John had, excuse me, Nicodemus had come to see him. So he said right away to Nicodemus, he said, you can't even see the kingdom of God unless you be born again. Notice it was nighttime. Notice did nobody bring Nicodemus to Jesus. So Jesus was not talking about the natural light. He was talking about the spiritual light. He said, unless you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. So as the story go, Jesus said much to Nicodemus and he talked about being born again, not of just flesh, but of the spirit and of the water. Notice, if you will, the greatest verse in the Bible. It offers more than any other particular verse. I would say the gospel, as the old folks would say, in a nutshell, is found right here in John 3.16. Notice, if you will, gospel, simply put, the good tidings of the kingdom and of salvation. Good tidings of the kingdom and of salvation. Watch it through Christ. What is the gospel? The life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel in a nutshell. I don't care how much I say, how much I teach, what I talk about, not only me, but anyone else. If we go before you with all kind of information and whatever, and never mention about Jesus, never talk about Christ, the life, the death and the burial, and the reason why he came, lived, died, and rose, we wouldn't be preaching to you the gospel. 
We could bring you all kind of update information. We could also uh, talk about current events. But if Jesus is not in the conversation, we are far away from the gospel. I said earlier in this passage, this verse, it offers more than any other verse, I would say, in the Bible. John 3, 16. I said I wanted to share eight factors. Factors. Watch this. Factors. Factors. Simply in a nutshell, uh, great devotions. Great devotions. Watch this. Watch this. For God, that's one. Number two, so love. Number three, the world. Number four, he gave. Number five, his only begotten son. Number six, that whosoever believe it. Number seven, should not perish. Number eight, have everlasting life. We want to talk about these eight factors. Notice, if you will, notice, if you will, the first in John 3, 16, for God. I'm sure that you will agree for God. He is the greatest person. He is the greatest person for God. Watch it. What else? So love. The greatest devotion. Deep affections. The greatest devotion. Watch this. The world. The greatest number. World, we're not talking about the sun, stars, or the universe, but we talk about humanity, man. Watch this. World comes from the Greek word cosmo. It means the makeup, the system, any and everything that is unlike. Believing in God. So the world, man's system, man's makeup. So notice, if you will, the greatest number. I believe we have more than six billion people throughout the world. So when we say world, uh, in this sense, we're talking about humanity, humanity. All right. Notice, if you will, so the greatest number is the world. Now, notice, if you will, when our forefather Adam sinned in the garden, God could have just wiped out the whole human race. But he didn't. Down through the years, generation, what caused him to do it? For he so loved. So he loved man so much that he cared for him to even after our forefather Adam sinned that he made a way out. So now the greatest number, the world, the human race, the greatest number. Let's look at number four factor. He gave. Who gave? God gave. What did he give? The greatest gift or the greatest act of gift. From Genesis to Revelation, you'll never find where anyone, uh, any person gave as much as God did. And why did he give it? Because he loved us. We're not talking about Eros love. We're not talking about storage love. We're not talking about 
friendship, love, philo, but we're talking about the agape, the unconditional. And the only way we can get this love, we have to be born of it. Paul tells us in Romans, Romans 5 and 5, and hope make it not a shame. Why? Because the love of God has been shedded abroad in our hearts. How? And through by the Holy Spirit. So that's the love that God had for us. That's the love that he gave. Factor number four and factor number five. Watch this. What was his only begotten? His only begotten. Notice the factor, the greatest gift. No one have ever given what God gave. The greatest gift. The greatest gift. That was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. His only begotten son. Isn't that amazing? That he would give up his only begotten son for the sins of the whole world. That was factor number five. Number six, let's move on. Number six, that whosoever believe it, my, 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 as we speak, you and I will fit here in number five. Number five, excuse me, number six, that whosoever, you and I are product of the whosoever, whosoever. All right. We, as I speak, are included. That whosoever, whosoever what? That was the greatest condition. Man was in a chaotic condition. But God loved us so that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever. So you and I are included in the whosoever believe it. Number seven, factor number seven, should not perish. My, had it not been for God's love, his grace, and his mercy, we would not have been in this glorious occasion. Should not perish, the greatest act of mercy. I've often said that God has many, many attributes, but three stands out. First is love, then grace, and then mercy. Love, unconditional, a divine inward revelation with an outward expression. Notice again, a divine inward revelation with an outward expression. For God so loved, here it is, that he gave an outward expression. Should not perish, the greatest act of mercy. Love is what God has, is what God is. Notice grace and unmerited favor. Something you get, you don't work for it, but God gives it to you. And then mercy, that's constantly, constantly in our favor. Mercy is keeping you from getting what you rightly deserve to get. Mercy, mercy. I'm sure we have prayed prayers and we have asked God to have mercy on us as we pray our prayers. So the greatest act of mercy. Watch this. That was number seven. Factor number eight, have everlasting life. Watch this. Out of all we said, it was the greatest result of John 3, 16. I'm sure if you think with me, we could sum the Bible up in three sayings. We know that God is and was the author we know that the theme, 
beginning from Genesis. Genesis. Chapter 3. Watch it. 15. Everything else evolves around that particular scripture. Watch this. He shall bruise your head. That's the pivot chapter of the Bible talking about Jesus Christ. So when man messed up, God could have just left us, wiped us out. But because of his love, he had already put in motion that when man messed up, he didn't have to wonder and to call uh, what was going on. He knew from the start that man would mess up. He had made provisions. So we see that uh, from the start in Genesis 3.15, he shall bruise his head. All right. Talking about Satan, Satan, he will conquer Satan. And then, as we said, number eight, everlasting life. Now, whether you know it or not, man, out of all of God's creation, man was the epitome out of his creation. Did you not know? Did you not know that man was created to live forever? whether in the presence of God or out of the presence of God. Out of all of God's creation, man was the epitome of his creation. The sun will disappear. The moon will disappear. The scripture talks about how they will melt with fervent heat and burn up this earth. All right. So. The world we're talking about is humanity, mankind. So out of all of God's creation, man was the epitome. He loved man so much that he wanted to have a relationship with him. And he did for several years until our forefather Adam, when he messed up in the garden, disobeyed in the garden. The fellowship, the closeness was broken. But thank God, down through generations, he made provision through his son. And we all have a right to have everlasting life. Life without end. So, God created man to live forever. But man messed it up. But Jesus came to straighten it up. I've said earlier, I didn't finish it. But the Bible, we could sum it up in three sayings that God is the author. The theme of the Bible is about Jesus Christ. And the purpose of the Bible is to save the lost man. So the Bible the Bible. God is the author. What did he start off in Genesis 3, 15 about his son? What was the reason to save the lost man? Notice, if you will, notice, if you will, in this verse, the gospel in a nutshell. Without this verse, there would be no need for the word, no other scriptures, no other sayings. Because it brings out, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. So the gospel in a nutshell, we trust in hope that you have been blessed. I know you can quote the scripture even from your childhood. Perhaps you hear it's easier and perhaps quoted more than any other scripture. So as we looked at this verse, I don't believe you'll find no other verse from Genesis to Revelation that offers as much as John 3, 16. And in that verse, we saw eight factors for God. So love the world. He gave 
his only begotten son, that whosoever believe it should not perish. And here where you and I, number eight, have everlasting life, which was the greatest results of all from Genesis to Revelation. We trust that we have said a word and we hope and trust that it will not go and return void. So if you haven't understood or even read this passage of scripture, read it. And I do believe that God will give you a revelation or inspiration or illumination from this passage. And I hope today that we, as we listen, have experienced or undergone John 3, 16. And we know Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. He was an elderly man, teacher, but he did not understand the spiritual things of Jesus. He did not have the spiritual eyesight until he went by night to see Jesus. So we see that's why this scripture is here. John 3, 16 offers more than any other scriptures in the Bible. We trust that you've been blessed. Trust that you've been blessed. The greatest verse in the Bible, John 3, 16. That's saying a lot. If you find another one that offers more than John 3, 16, please share it with me. So we trust that you've been blessed today. We'll conclude with the prayer and pray that this will go forth and that you'll be richly blessed. All right, let us pray. Father, which again, we say thank you for what you've given us. We pray that others will, will receive it. We thank you for having undergone and experienced this 316 in our life. We thank you. We ask that you would bless those that will hear, believe, and receive. It is again, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to share your word. We ask those that will hear will be blessed. For we thank you now. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.
Come on in. 